Hey everybody, I'm Christopher Green. You're watching AMTV Alternative Media Television. Hard hitting and in your face. It is Friday, October 7th, 2016, and we have a wild one about to hit Florida and the southeastern coast. Now, it seems like since I've been doing this nearly 10 years now, we get a lot of these storms. You know, I think about back to the devastation of Hurricane Sandy. I think about Hurricane Katrina. All of these catastrophic events that take people by surprise. And the question we always put out there, and we talk a lot about preparedness here on our show, we ask the basic question, are you prepared? You know, what happens if the electricity goes out for a prolonged period of time? The internet shuts down. You know, keep in mind, we've only had the internet, essentially, Twitter, Facebook, YouTube, etc. All these communication tools for roughly 10 years. So what happens in the event you can't turn on a light or you don't have power? Now, it seems alarmist because the mainstream media just baits into this stuff. You know, they call the mainstream media, for example, the rape and murder channel, channel, for example. If it bleeds, it leads. So there's a lot of fear mongering around this. You know, you see Anderson Cooper, Don Lemon, you know, the CNN reporters with the wind blowing in their face, you know, behind them and the intense rain and all of this fear. But this is also very, very real. A Fox News anchor made startling predictions about the destruction Hurricane Matthew may cause as it continues along the East Coast of America. Shep Smith says of Hurricane Matthew, your kids will die. Now this is, those are not my words, those are the words of Shep Smith. Popular presenter Shep Smith used strong words to implore Florida residents to evacuate before disaster strikes. He said, this moves 20 miles to the west, and you and everyone you know are dead. All of you, because you can't survive it. This moves 20 miles to the west, and you and everyone you know are dead. All of you, because you can't survive it. It's not possible, unless you're very, very lucky. And your kids die too. And then you can see here, you know, him giving the weather report. His matter-of-fact statements and deadpan delivery caused the segment to spread far and wide on social media. Mr. Smith also spoke to a Floridian woman who did not want to leave her home. So we're talking about the evacuation of some 2 million people. I was talking to a family member of mine. You know, it's amazing how if you're not there, you know, we don't think that we're affected. It's like, oh, I don't live in Florida. I'm, I'm not in that state. So everything's fine. You know, I'm here in Arizona. But these events happen more and more often. California, for example, just put out a historic earthquake warning that caught a lot of people by surprise and have a lot of people worry. And the point to all of this, I really think, is education, being prepared ahead of time so that when something like this happens, you're not running around like a chicken with his head cut off. I would like to bring on a special guest today because I've gotten a lot of requests for education, how-to videos. Christopher, okay, so yes, this sounds bad. This is scary. Shep Smith is, is saying, literally, if you don't leave and the storm turns a specific direction, that you could die. So what am I supposed to do? How do I prepare myself? How do I build an off-grid system in a case like this? Or if the electricity goes out for a prolonged period of time. I have uh, David Willis with me from Point Zero Energy. They've been a long-term sponsor with us, and he is an expert in this area. David, hey, how you doing? I'm doing good, Christopher. How are you? Oh, I'm, do I'm doing great. So we've got this, you know, big storm coming through, uh, Hurricane Matthew. You know, we've seen it move through Haiti, a lot of this devastation. And you know, we were talking before the program today, these aren't the only type of events that can happen. Um, but the goal of today's show, I really want to give our audience an education mm -hmm. on you know, kind of your background, what you guys do, and how to prepare yourself for these types of events. So, uh, of course, Point Zero Energy, you guys have been a long-term partner with us. In fact, I'd recommend everybody click the link below right now if you haven't already. Go to pointzeroenergy.com uh, where you can learn about David, his wife Sherry, 
uh, their company, all the things that they do. But tell us a little bit about how you started your company. You know, what was the motivation uh, to get into you know backup power and solar backup and all this kind of stuff? Well, yeah, Christopher. Um, we we started out pretty much like most of your viewers here. Is uh, you know we realized that there were. Uh, real possibilities that uh, we could have long-term power outages and realized that we just simply weren't prepared for it. And uh, so I started looking at products out there. Um, you know, how could I have a backup power to keep my refrigerator going? My, uh, you know, if it's the winter time, how am I going to keep my house warm? My gas furnace runs on electricity. Um, so I was looking at all these things and, and I found some solar generators out there on the market and, and I, I'm my background is mechanical engineering, so I looked into these and I realized that uh, I couldn't find anything out there that would back up my uh, my things I needed to run for any long term. Uh, they might run a fridge for uh, ten hours. It might keep my furnace going for five hours, but uh, you know, in the winter time, I might have I might need that furnace going for more than ten hours during a power outage, and so we really couldn't find anything that fit our needs. And so that's where I started my company is I, I designed a system that uh, is based for long-term power outages, how to keep these essential things going um, during, I mean, a hurricane or, uh, you know, we talked of some other things, an ep economic collapse, a terrorist attack, cyber attack, you know, all these things could take our power grid out for, you know, not just a few hours, but weeks or months or even up to years. And so, uh, you know, we wanted something that could supply that backup power for long term. And that's really how we got started in this. How serious do you think, and I know, you know, weather is tough to predict, but, you know, you look at an event like Hurricane Matthew, you know, your systems are, you know, built for a situation like this. It just, it's amazing, you know, just thinking here out loud how dependent we are on the grid you know, on electricity, on communication. I mean, do you think Americans are really prepared for these events? And why, why do you think they're not prepared if they're not as prepared as they should be? Well, I think it's, it's weird because, you know, if you went just back 100 years ago, uh, we weren't dependent on electricity. We knew how to live without it. Uh, but just gradually over time, we've got, got dependent on our, uh, you know, our our refrigerator, our freezer, uh, even heating our home. You know, back then we all heated our homes with, with wood heat or something like that. Um, but nowadays we, we have to have electricity for to survive. And we've just slowly got dependent on that. And I think that for the most part, uh, the grid is pretty dependable. And so we kind of take it for granted and think it's always going to be there. And so, no, I, I really don't think the American population is prepared for any sort of major power outage. Mm -hmm. So your systems are built specifically for, like, how long of a power outage? Is it a long-term solution? Or could you explain yeah. that yeah, well, I, Yeah, yeah. So um, I designed it to where you could last, you know, for example, a, a fridge. You could run it for um, three to four days, even without any sun. So, you know, the hurricane comes, you might have three or four days without much sun or you can't put your panels out or whatnot. So the batteries are big enough to where it'll, it'll withstand that time without any sun. And then once the sun comes out, you put your panels out and they'll recharge your system back up. So essentially this will work indefinitely. It'll just keep going forever as long as we have a sun out there. Um, and, and unlike a gasoline generator, you know, most people, they think they're prepared because they have a gasoline generator at their home. Um, and that's great, except for you've got to get gas to refill that generator. And, and in a long-term outage, I don't know if you've ever seen those pictures online about people trying to get to gas stations when mm -hmm. there's hurricanes going on. I mean, the, the lines are, you know, clear across the city to get to a gas station. So if they're lucky enough to even have one that has power to pump fuel. So really a gasoline generator doesn't provide that long-term power backup that you need in these sort of situations. Yeah, and we're seeing that too. You see these bottlenecks where, you know, in Florida, you know, days prior to this event as the storm's moving through literally, you know, right now, and I hope there's not much devastation. I hope the forecasters are wrong, but, you know, you see all the car cars backed up, piled up, you know, waiting for yeah. gas, and it's just all of a sudden there's a bottleneck. Or people yeah, are yeah. rushing to the store shelves and they're clearing out water, food, you know, essentials. It's like, you know, you need to do those things before these types of events, disasters strike, you know, 
over the right. best plan for the worse. It's not just hurricanes. There's, and like you said too, I think it's important to remind people that the grid is dependable in a lot of respects, but you know, you plan for a disaster and you know, these kinds of situations that can potentially happen. Now, so tell us a little bit about your products. You know, one of the units I'm most familiar with is the Home Grid 5000 HD solar generator. Could you tell us the differences between, you know, a few of the different products, kind of, you know, how much power you get with each, uh, mm -hmm. et cetera, and just kind of elaborate on that a little bit? Yeah, so the 5000 HD is really designed to, to run pretty much everything in your home. Um, it has the 220 volt power, so you can actually plug it into a 220 volt outlet, uh, disconnect the grid, you know, because you don't want that turned on when the grid comes back on. Uh, disconnect the grid, plug that on, and it'll it'll turn every outlet on your in your house on, and, and run everything. Um, now, obviously, in its in its form, it only comes with you know 400 or 800 sol watts of solar, whichever unit you choose, uh, and so it's not going to run everything. If you have electric heat, you know, it's not going to keep that going. It's not going to run a clothes dryer long term, things like that. But it will run your refrigerator, your freezer. Uh, gas furnace, um, things like that, those essentials that you really need, it'll keep those going. And, um, you know, we design them for long term. For, for example, our home grid 5000 HD, we have an ultimate version, which comes with, you know, a large amount of batteries. It'll run a fridge for 106 hours without any sun to wow. recharge that battery. Wow. Yeah, 100, 106 hours on a standard refrigerator without recharging. Yep. Yeah, okay. and then then once the sun comes out, it'll charge that back up in nine hours of sun, and you're back full and ready for another 106 hours of no sun. Mm -hmm. Yeah, one thing you know to keep in mind too is that you know these, you know, products aren't just for disaster. You know, one of the things I like to do is you know I like to get out of the city on the <laughs> weekends. I like to camp, you know, RV, you know, do do these kinds of things. But these are also portable units you can bring along with you. Right. Are you seeing most of your customers using it for uh, those types of purposes, or is it mostly for preparation, or both? Like, how do you see it? Uh, mo you know, the products most used in practice. Uh, yeah, most people buy it for the purpose of uh, of backup power in case of an emergency. Uh, mm -hmm. But then, usually, when they have it, they go camping and they think it's you know it's fun to take that along and run their TV and VCR and have a fridge there and you know you know that sort of thing. But usually they don't buy it for that purpose. It's just an added benefit that they have with that generator. Okay. Now a typical family of four, let's say, needs backup power. Uh, which of uh, these different options would you recommend for like your your typical family? The power goes out. You know what what do they need? And, you know, how do they prepare uh, yeah. with, you know, these products? So the biggest question is, is they need to know if there's anything 220 that, volts that they need to run. Uh, so if they have like a well pump or something like that that's 220 volts that they need to run, then they would definitely have to go with one of the 5,000 HD versions. If they just want to run, you know, a fridge, freezer, uh, cooktop stove, microwave, you know, things like that to keep keep them going, some lights. Uh, then they can go with the 3000 version, which is a little bit less money. Um, but if they do want to run a fridge long term, I would recommend going with uh, either our 3000 Ultimate or our 5000 HD Extreme. Both of those will run a refrigerator for over 50 hours without sun. And, and really, that's, that's the size I would say for an emergency is one of those two. Now, is there any special setup or installation that needs to be done to the house or anything like that to, to work with everything? Or um, no, it'll if you just want to run things temporarily, you can just wheel it right into your kitchen or whatever. Um, the they cut the panels come with um, twenty five feet of, of wire, so you can set those outside, run a wire through the window or whatever. Um, you can obviously extend those longer if you need to. Um, and then you can just plug a microwave, your fridge, whatever, into that. Uh, now there is with the 5000 HD the option to plug in to the home electrical system. And with that you would have a little bit extra. Uh, you would need to make sure you have a switch to shut the grid off. And then you'd have to have a 220 volt outlet somewhere to plug into or connect directly into an electrical panel. But it will work just by itself without any electrical modifications. Okay. You know, one question I get a lot is uh, we see a lot of these 
uh, you know, backup uh, generators that are on the market today. What do you think, you know, sets you guys apart, makes you different than, let's say, you know, the other options available? Well, there's two real things that, that I see. Uh, one is the size of the system. Uh, most of you see on the market are just way too small for an emergency situation. They're, they're fine for camping, uh, things like that. It'll run a TV. But if you need to run a fridge or heat your home or anything that you can't get, it, get away without having it running, you know, you don't want to let your food get warm and spoil and you don't want to uh, freeze to death in your home. Uh, so if you have something that's really essential, you need to have enough power so when the sun isn't there during a storm or whatnot, that it'll keep running. And most of these just simply aren't designed big enough for that. Uh, and then another thing, and this is what most people don't understand, is the efficiency of different components in these systems. In fact, I was just looking at one the other day that was actually twice the size of my, um, my uh, Ultimate HD package. Uh, but when I actually looked at the inefficiencies of both the inverter and the charge controller, um, I found that, if, let me look here real quick. So it'll run, it actually would only run a fridge for 27 hours without mm -hmm. sun, just because of the inefficiencies in the system. And so most people don't know this. They'll just look at it and they'll see, oh, it's got 800 watts of solar and it'll do this many watts. Uh, but they don't look at the, the small details in there and see that... Uh, how long can it actually run something for? And, and that's what's important. What advice would you give, you know, so we've got this storm moving through, you know, to a floor, you know, floor, if you're in Florida and you haven't evacuated, <laughs> you're not prepared, you should get out. I mean, I was watching last night, you know, on television just to see how the storm was developing on the Weather Channel and they're saying, you know, two million people are evacuating, they're showing all these horrible pictures and the reporters, I'm, I'm thinking, God, you guys need to get out of here too. Like, why are you standing there if there's, you know, an evacuation? You know, what advice would you give to people that aren't prepared? I mean, how can they take action today and, you know, become educated and, you know, learn about more you know, what they need to handle an emergency, you know, like this or some of these other, you know, incidents that we talked about? Yeah, well, I mean, for the, the storm that's going on right now, it's really too late to prepare at this point. Uh, but for future events, um, really, it, it's tough because most most systems out there that are sold, uh, they sell them through, you know, a big dis distribution of, of marketers. And those marketers usually don't even understand solar or anything about it. They just know this, the points that sell the generators and the sell these solar. So really... You've got to find either find somebody that you trust that sells generators or do the research yourself and, and figure out what all these things mean. What does the MPPT charge controller mean? What does um, idle power consumption on your inverter mean? You know, all these things that most people don't really want to spend the time doing, but you really have to do that if you want to get something that's going to, uh, you know, be sustainable for you. Um, I do have a lot of education on my website. I have a a PDF you've, you've been advertising on your site about how to educate you on how to make a backup system that you can depend your life on. It goes through all these different aspects of a system. Uh, and unfortunately, uh, with the world that we live in, you really have to educate yourself if you want to get something that, that will do what you want to do. You can't trust the, the person selling them anymore. Yeah. yeah, and I always try to emphasize that you know, to our listeners, too, that you guys are you know, a real, a real family business too. I mean, you're not going to mm -hmm. pick up a phone, call you guys and be sent out to you know, India or one of these places. <laughs> you're going to speak yeah. with a, a real person. It really is important. I think the education side of it uh, is extremely valuable. Mm -hmm. um, David, thank you so much for coming on today. If you're tuning in and watching, please click the link below right now. Uh, visit our sponsor, pointzeroenergy.com. Uh, also, a phone number, David, is there a good number for people to reach out and give you a call directly if they just want to learn more about the products and you know, sure, speak with you? Sure, sure, yeah. Yeah, we have our phone number is 208-530-2393. Uh, um, it's also on our website at the top of the page, so if you didn't write it down, uh, you can just look there. David, thank you so much for taking the time out of your day to share all this with our audience. Uh, thank you, Christopher. All right, I'll talk to you soon. We got to go to a quick break. I'll be right back. I'm Christopher Green. You're watching AMTV, Alternative Media Television. Hard hitting and in your face. Click the link below right now. Visit our sponsor, pointzeroenergy.com.